Easy, welcome back. My name's Scepter. Um, today, in the Ableton Live tutorials, we'll be looking at bass again. Uh, this time, we'll be making our own bass, then using uh, a synth and a sampler. So, if you don't have uh, Massive, is what I'm going to use in this case, um, then you can do it with the Ableton Simpler as well. Uh, we're going to look at processing chains, a little bit of resampling, and then some arrangement. So, it's quite a lot to take in, but it should uncobweb a few of the kind of general questions that I'm sure a lot of you have on it's fine you can make a certain bass sound but then what do you do with it afterwards if you don't want to use something that's out of a sample pack because we've kind of looked at that already so without further ado um, this is what I've made just for the sake of the project <laughs> Cool, so you get the idea. Um, we're not going to be looking at the drums, that's just out of a clax pack, which I use quite a lot for these uh, tutorials. Now, bass wise, we're going to have a look first of all at uh, the simpler version. Actually, no, we won't. We'll look at the massive version. So, uh, patch and I don't want to look at the patch too much um, it's more the processing chain which is the key in this so the little stabs and bits that I have made of it sound like this um, so just to brush over the patch very quickly uh, if I turn all the plugins off It's quite a lot. Go back. The original patch sounds like this. I don't know if you can even really hear that. But something quite different. Um, in the patch itself, is very simple. Uh, I've used the performer just to control a bandpass filter. There's one oscillator working, just going to one filter. No effects, a little bit of um, ring mod on oscillator one, and then it's a sine triangle wave where I'm using mostly triangle. And that is it. No other LFOs. No fancy envelopes, no nothing, which as you can tell by itself sounds pretty rubbish anyway. Cool. So, to talk you through and show you through the processing chain, if we just turn the first bit on. So I've spoken about chains like this before now. Um, first of all, you probably would have heard of um, frequency grouping quite a lot. And basically what that is, is you use an EQ just to change the frequency, uh, sorry, uh, control the frequencies or confine them to certain areas. So on here, I've got sub as one of them to create these duplicates, um, just right click duplicate and it'll bring out another uh, well what we're using them as frequency bands so uh, I should get rid of that so I've got one which is sub which is about 100 Hertz 150 Hertz um, and under which I don't really want any of the distortion afterwards that I've got in the mids change to be affecting because it's nice if it stays nice and clean like that and then all the other plugins past that point are still turned off at the moment uh, the mids now the mids I've got a cut uh, the same place but it's just cutting the lows this time which 150 hertz again then it's all these plugins really that that make the difference so we turn them off and we'll go through one by one as we usually do and I'll explain why I've used each of them as we go through so first of all saturator um, just to add some distortion as always I've, I've tried to use well I have just used the Ableton stock plugin so 
uh, it is something that you have. Uh, and I only have the standard version, so I've got kind of the most basic uh, amount of them as well, and it can still be done. So saturator, 20 dB of boost, that's quite a lot, or drive I should say, but the original sound inside Massive isn't pushed very hard at all and it is very quiet. Um, so I haven't compensated uh, by taking the output down because it's helping me as a leveller. After that, uh, reverb, which decay time is very short, uh, not even half a second. And then uh, dry wet is just over 50%. And I don't think I've changed anything else on it. Uh, mid, mid or high quality I'd always go for because uh, it does make a difference and that short tail really just makes a difference in how it sits in your speakers or in your headphones without it it just pushes it back uh, in the mix a little bit and can make it sound more natural because I think I mentioned in my last video on drums you'll never in your life hear a sound without reverb on it unless you're in an echo chamber um, so it sounds very unnatural so even very very small amounts of reverb can help your mix quite a lot it doesn't have to be a really long tail and because we've got it um, in chains here or in frequency patterns I can just control the mids and the tops without uh, putting reverb on the sub so Moving on again, uh, overdrive, so just a different type of distortion, uh, more kind of guitar-y sound, um, and I've just used it on the tops this time because before that is still lacking in the tops. So it's just brought that out. Again, I think that's just straight out of, uh, there's no fancy uh, preset on there, it's just straight out of the, um, plugins folder or effects folder sorry and erosion just adds to the, the top end again uh, it's nice to try and replicate some analog uh, sound and you used to get a lot of cable noise and hiss when you were recording through uh, preamps and stuff like that so even though you might not associate adding noise to your bass sound or you might not feel like you hear so much noise in bass sounds that you're trying to replicate, a lot of the time it is there and they will have used it in order to thicken out the top end without it getting too harsh because the higher in the frequencies you distort, the more harsh they can get very quickly. And I've got it set down at about 3K. Um, I always have it on wide because I just think it sounds better and the amount at 70 to 80 percent uh, and then a chorus not very much happening there <laughs> uh, it's very very subtle usually i use chorus to add stereo image um, but because we've had the erosion there it's already quite stereo anyway um, and it, it's good if you find you are adding a lot of noise and it is getting very harsh if you add a chorus it can soften that quite a lot uh, that's most of the time what I use it for is to round off harsh distortions and then we've got uh, auto filter just on a notch now, now I have um, automated this is it this one? yeah on frequency just to move up and down throughout the MIDI to create a little bit more interest and then a frequency shifter and I've used that uh, to use the ring modulation function in it and I've got two hertz on the spread as well and again set to wide but the dry wet is very low if we turn it up so you can hear it a bit more that's kind of cool effect to do like that actually that'd be a cool one to automate uh, throughout to keep it interesting 
don't know where it was now. It's about there. Um, yeah, so I've used that to add extra movement. I would just turn the sub back on. And then a couple more filters afterwards. No automation on these. These are more just to sculpt the sound. I do like uh, the sound of notch filters in Reese's. Um, it can create a lot of interest very easily, but in this case, I've just used it really as an EQ to cut the notches out because I like the notch shape. So the second one along is to take the kind of honky nature of it away. Just a bit of EQ. More distortion. Uh, this time I have got it set to analog clip. I don't think I did in the last one. Yeah, no, it's on hard curve. Um, set to analog clip. Again, just using it as a bit of a leveler and a different texture and distortion, create some extra harmonics. Now that reverb will come back to that because I actually put that on a bit later. And then a glue compressor. Um, I don't know if you realise actually, but the filters and the glue compressor and the EQ all come and they affect both of the chains, so the subs and the mids. So once I've added the distortion and the effects that I want on the mids, uh, it's, we basically distort them both together to make it sound like they were uh, one sound again, kind of gel them back together, and that's the same thing I'm using the compressor for. Now the compressor, gel compressor is working pretty hard. Um, and, and it's working to kind of smooth all the level differences out and squash them back together so it doesn't sound like we split the frequencies up in the first place. Cool, so that's that one. Uh, so if you've got Massive or you've got any other soft synths or even a hardware synth, um, I'd recommend trying lots of different uh, synths and changing your effects around and even putting them in a different order, like uh, reverbs before, distortions, and afterwards will have a really different effect or a different outcome. Uh, filters before distortions, filters after distortions, blah, 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 blah. Um, and each of the outcomes you'll get will be slightly different. And that's good for making edits, uh, different sounds, using the same techniques to create basses that are very of the same style but different, that you could use in different tunes. Um, and then always save the rack that you've got. So this one, if we wanted to save it, we just go to Audio Effects Rack drag it up to user library and then you can put it in presets or just drop it in and call it uh, bass rack one and then you can always recall and it will come up with the grouping as well always recall these plugins that you used in a, at a later date and then use a different synth to replicate something uh, of the same style but slightly different. Cool, so um, the same, I'm not really going to go through all the plugins again, but I will just show you that they are very similar. This time I've got Hip Hop Bass, which came with Ableton. I think I got it out of the instrument. Where did I get it from? Mm, was it instrument? Yeah, instrument rack, yeah, out of the hip hop bass bit. So you should all have it as a preset anyway. And then using the same chain, but with the um, settings being slightly different, I came up with this, if it wants to play. So that, which is a 
kind of crummy hip hop based sample you can still make into something that you could use in Eurofunk, dubstep um, or any of the harder genres so you don't even have to have massive in order to make this type of bass is what I'm getting at with that now whilst I was doing that I realised that I really liked it with a lot of reverb on so I resampled that uh, resampled it and then reversed it because I thought that was pretty cool um, and then out of that and the patch that I made in Massive I created a bass riff um, that one doesn't actually I know it's good it's not on anymore And then again with the drums. So just splitting and taking each of the sounds out one by one then so you can hear the different roles they're having within the track or call it a track within the little uh, loop that I've made to kind of understand where the layering and the importance of each sound along the riff sits. Um, so yeah I mean that's more or less it I guess. One thing, one other thing I would say is with your processing what I do is if you if you start out or your first chain you don't think it sounds so great then the next time you do it try instead of using the same distortions and the same reverbs uh, but on different settings if you've got any other uh, brands of ones or even just the other ones within Ableton try something completely different uh, because they do have different timbres and different textures and stuff like that and before you go to buy maybe a lexicon reverb pack or the d16 um, distortion pack try do try everything you've got first because a lot of the time i've bought plugins and then i've realized that actually the reason i couldn't do it is because i didn't know what setting i wanted really within the plugin itself cool so that's that anyway uh please do like and subscribe if you've got any questions drop them to me in the comments and i'll always get back to you until the next time peace